Welcome to Bright Check. I'm Brian, and behind me is a 2018 F-150 Power Stroke. In this episode, we're gonna have a funeral for a friend because it is not long for this world. We hate to admit it, it's three years old and it's going to the grave. Let's check it out. Ford Power Stroke, huh. A diesel and a half ton. I mean, what are people thinking? Ram did it first, Ford followed suit, and now GM's got one. The question is why? But we're gonna answer that here in a little bit. But first, let's talk about what is this? And so this is a three liter single turbo V6 diesel. And they got it from, the, it's a Ford line. They had it in the Jaguar Land Rover division, which is interesting because that was originally designed for a luxury car, just like the Ram was originally designed for Cadillac, believe it or not. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this. What did Ford do? Ford took their Power Stroke team and basically said, we gotta put this in the F-150, let's make it F-150. And they did that by putting the same fuel management and PCM system that's in the 6.7. It has a similar turbo design, although it's outboard exhaust versus inboard exhaust, which means it's not in the valley, it's on the exterior of the block, just like EcoBoost turbos. It has a CGI block, which means it's a little sturdier and a little heavier. It has an interesting uh, oil pan designed for the start-stop, which is all about fuel mileage. And that's one of the things they wanted to achieve with this. And also to fit it in the F-150, different than the Jaguar Land Rovers that it goes in, air boxes over here, all your AC lines over here. They had to do some trick uh, air ducting, <laughs> intake ducting, and they also had to do some trick with their accessory drives. It actually has two drive belts on the accessory for different setup where it is in the F-150 compared to Jaguar Land Rovers. This engine designed for 150,000 miles. Will it go further? Sure. Will it get to you less than 150,000 without any major issues? Yes. Now, we're gonna get into more numbers here in a minute. We're gonna see how it drives. So that's what we'll do next. All right, Craig. So we've talked enough about the power stroke. Yeah, absolutely It's have. time to see what it can do. Is it more power or more stroke? <laughs> Hit it. to a brisk 3,400 RPM. It's a diesel. It's and okay. And 60, okay. So, as we all know, I'm not particularly a diesel fan. What? What? Huh. But I am gonna say, this is pretty smooth. It's pretty smooth. You could put this into anyone that doesn't care about cars and they would probably not know it's a diesel. They would not know or care. They would just know, they would just feel a lot of torque down low and they would yes, like that. and there's a lot of torque down low. In if fact, you, there's 440 pound feet of torque down low. If EV is your thing, this isn't that far off. Oh, that's a good point. In sensation. Okay, yeah. so I've got questions for you. Okay. This is Ford's answer to its competition. You know I is, like rare engines. And this you is what, do, this is what which this is, is why we're driving this truck today. Okay, all right. Um, you can't leave well enough alone. Sometimes the V8 is just the answer. But anyways, so. Or the turbo. Or the turbo V6. Yeah. So anyways. What is this competition? How does this stack up? Well, it's initial competition was the Eco Diesel in the Ram. Okay. The first generation of that in the Ram, and it was successful sales-wise. Yes. Had some issues. Yeah. Um, like all engines do, but they went, it had a, quite a few issues initially. To the point that they've actually revamped that engine entirely. They've totally redone it, right. and they've kind of eliminated most they've of those. They've solved now. all those problems. Yeah. Now, now, this is a much lower volume of sales mm -hmm. than that, but I have not heard of by and large problems with this motor. No, there, there's the typical problems. There's some EGR issues and a few other things, but you know, and I'm sure in the comments will let us know some other issues. Sure. Or that none of those are issues. Sure. <laughs> but because diesel people like their, their trucks. They are or fans like of that, yes. It didn't matter which one. Um, but yes, um, no, by and large, pretty reliable. So what was Ford's objective of, with this? Obviously it had competition from Ford, GM, I'm not from Ford, competition from Dodge and FCA. At the time, GM had not come out with theirs yet. Right. What were the targets for this truck? So the targets were Ford, you know, is a number. They like numbers. Yes. And they like to one up their competition, even if it's one digit. It's all it takes. So they were trying to be, they were trying to do three things. It was uh, power. Of course. Fuel mileage. Of course. And towing. Absolutely. It's a truck, right? So, so how did it do? It won all those against its one rival, the first generation of the Eco Diesel. By like one number in every case, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. beat it, yeah. Okay, so credit where it's due. Mm -hmm. This is a pre-owned vehicle from Mike Brown Ford in Granbury, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles Brockman's your guy. He yep. sets us up with Check good reviews all the time. Great guy. Um, 
This has 1,900 miles on the trip odometer yep. and over 22 miles a gallon. Pretty good. That's real world mileage, 22 miles a gallon. That's good. That's good with 20 inch wheels and all wheel drive. Because drive. the EcoBoost V6s in this generation and the Coyote V8s 18. are going to get what, 17, 18, 19, yeah. maybe if you're lucky? Maybe. Right. right. So, pretty good. So, I think it got the fuel economy part. So, here's my problem with the fuel economy part. On the front end, when you bought this truck, when this truck came out, you could only get it in Lariat or higher trim levels, yep. which means no XL, no XLT, right. and it was a seven thousand dollar premium. Seven thousand dollar option on yeah the on already premium package. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of a hard sell. Like if you're if you're an MPG guy, you're paying a lot to get MPG. In fairness, you can get the 2021, the last year they're going to make this because this is the this funeral for a friend. Exactly. Uh, you can get it in an XLT. Okay. So, so they did make it consumer grade, and a it's bit. not a seven thousand dollar option. It's like a it's still like a five thousand dollar option, something like that. So, still up there yeah. okay um let's just get down to it is it any good i think you and i would both agree on this as much as you don't like diesels i think we would say it's good yeah i do but i think we both know why it's going away take rate yeah so yeah and so ford's initial objective when they when they brought this motor to the f-150 like all right everybody wants it we're bringing it right fine we're gonna do it they wanted a five percent take rate and basically they said if there's a five percent take rate we'll keep doing it and we may expand it, maybe lower the cost of it, that right. sort of thing. They didn't really ever get that because they offer six other engines. That's the problem, right? And the other problem is the other engines they offer are just really as good, good or they're better. Really good, yeah. So they're more powerful, powerful, or they tow more. They just maybe they suffer a little bit in fuel mileage, or but maybe they're faster. Maybe I they think, rev beyond thirty four hundred. I think two things killed this, and here's I think why we have the death of the power boost or power stroke. Yeah, power boost. Power <laughs> stroke. Freudian slip there. The reason we have the depth of the power stroke in the F-150 is one, the power boost. Right. So the power boost hybrid EcoBoost V6 came out, and basically the reason you would get this diesel is the fuel mileage. Well, now the power boost does that. Right. It solved that. Solved that problem. And then the other thing is, I think the other diesels got better. The Eco diesel and the Ram got better. The Duramax diesel came out in the GM, and it's really good. Okay. And I think Ford decided, based on the take rate and the power boost we have, we don't want to invest the energy and in marketing into the power, power stroke. We're done with it. It's gone by way of the manual, manual transmission. Yep. The diesel option was presented by the manufacturer. The buyers did not buy it, and here we are. Yep. All right, Brian. You know what time it is? Oh yeah. And I'm a little conflicted on this. It's hipster score time. Oh crap. <laughs> Whew. Three, two, one, three. I don't know. Does it even apply? You're gonna give just an NA? Does it even apply? You're just gonna does not compute? <laughs> Well, do you know how hipster scores work? Let's try this again. <laughs> three, two, one, four. Three. Four? Yeah. Okay. Why four instead of a three? Because eighties Mercedes are run on biodiesel or cool to hipsters, and this is diesel too. I want to give this a higher score because it's a diesel and it's all about the fuel mileage, and that's what they're going for. But this is too expensive to really be a hipster car. But it, it doesn't say Eco Power Stroke. There's no, no leaves true. anywhere on this. That's true. It's a dirty diesel. Is also known as dirty compared to hipsters. They really are. And it's, there ain't no biodiesel with this thing with all the depth filters. No, you, crap. Can't, you can't do it. So why? Just not is the answer. Yeah. Other than that, it's an F-150. It's a truck. It's four-wheel drive. Hipsters, no, this ain't a hipster it ain't car. A hipster car. No. One more thing, Craig. Who's it for? Who's it for? And that's a really good question. I'm glad you brought that up because as much as we understand why Ford is getting rid of this engine, mm -hmm. and there's some reasons, there's some good reasons for it. Yeah. I think this is perfect for if you have an RV that's less than 8,000, 8, 9,000 pounds, well within that tow rating. Where torque is priority. Torque is priority, yeah. and you're going to go a long distance. Yeah. Like you're driving across the country and you're going to stop to stop. Get this. If you got a long yeah. running business and you're driving a trailer that's five to 6,000 pounds all day long and you don't need a three quarter ton. That's a good point. This is perfect. So you are going to get better mileage. In this. If you're maybe a small business owner and you're towing a cargo trailer that's, like you said, three to 6,000 pounds, yeah. a three quarter ton is kind of a lot to ask for that. You give yeah, up ride it's quality, uh, buying costs is higher, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. This kind of makes sense there. It does. This does make more sense in that realm because you're going to get 11 to 12 miles a gallon towing this with this. Uh, versus a EcoBoost gas, you're probably going to get eight to nine. And so you're still going to get that extra mileage rating. If you're doing a lot of it, it's going to pay off. Well, and I would bet that you would get more than 11, 12 miles a gallon time. Possibly. You yeah, might get more. Yeah. And so I want to conclude this funeral for your friend, not really my friend. <laughs> it's actually a great option if you like half ton diesels and you want it quiet and smooth. This is quieter and smoother than the Duramax. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's got all the power down low. But it does lack the Duramax charm. You brought this up earlier, the inline six GM 
three liter diesel has if you're a diesel guy but want a half ton it gives you the diesel vibes this doesn't really do that in a weird way i think ford outsmarted themselves and over engineered the quietness into this which drove the diesel buyer out yeah because diesel buyers will sometimes they'll they want an honest little, diesel buyer will admit to you that look yeah. i just want a diesel because i like the sound I like which the is great that's fine I, I get it it's yeah. kind of like a v8 i like i get it right right um but they almost overdid it and so like you can't tell this thing's a diesel when you're driving it around and you kind of lose some of the diesel charm that comes with yeah. the power stroke they've almost and lexus diesels. this thing and i think gm did a better job of that in their f-150 you can tell it's a diesel a little bit more not in a bad way but in the good diesel way yeah and i think hey, look as much as i, I, I want to give diesels crap the duramax does have charm it does in have a diesel way if you're going in a diesel way yeah and on that bombshell if you like one go get one while you can <laughs> yes and uh, if you're looking for a pre-owned one check out this one at mike brown ford Thanks for watching. Have a good one.